What's going on, everyone? I'm Chris Baker. And I'm Ty Backer. Welcome to episode 99 of Behind the Tool Belt with TC Backer Construction. All right, so that was a quick intro. Yeah, it was. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 99. I'm glad to have everyone here with us. Um, We have the the fine gentleman, uh, Chris and Joe from Lead Scout. Um, They're stationed up in Michigan, correct? That's where you guys are from, Michigan. Uh, So we got them them zooming in here to talk a little bit about what Lead Scout does. Um, We're going to talk a little bit about the 21 Turkey Salute at the end of the show today, so make sure you guys uh, stick around for that. This is episode 99. Whoa, 99. 99 hours of live content. Actually, more than that, because we we tend to go over a little bit sometimes, but man, has it been fun. And we've gone, we've done this a lot, so it started a couple years ago. We were trying to promote um, like a fundraiser that we were promoting at that time. And, and we didn't really know how to like really get the word out on the street. Like, Hey, we're building these gazebos. We're, we're trying to auction them off and raise money for workforce now. And, uh, some sort of dog, um, rescue architecture. Yeah. Barkitecture. Okay. So architecture, And then the, what the life, not life path. Uh, Harvest uh, Transitional Living Program. Yes, Harvest Transitional Living, which is a phenomenal facility where they take care of, uh, like displaced children and things like that and they get them educated and, and teach them you know just life skills and stuff like that so that was that was real big so at the the entire time at the home show we went live like four or five times a day and we were attracting more people to our live shows than were actually coming in the doors of the home show so we were like dude this is pretty cool maybe we should do this more often and we did and that's kind of where this all happened and all started and, and mm-hmm. here we are today 99 plus yeah, episodes man. into it now and, and you guys are lucky contestants of the 99th <laughs> episode so i'm glad you guys could make it uh we appreciate you ca- carving out time to to fit us in like you guys did so so tell us a little bit about like let's start with chris tell us a little bit about you know your background and 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 fast forward the whole way to the day so give us the scoop man what's up yeah well, thanks for having uh, Joe and I on. We're excited to be here. Kind of wish you would have waited maybe one more episode, but that's okay. Right. right. That's They've all good. You've got a big 100th episode planned. That's I right. want to yeah, hear more yeah, about yeah, that, yeah. too. Well, you can yeah. tune in. I'm thinking next week somewhere between 1 and, well, after 1, about probably like 3 o'clock-ish, we'll be going live from there. But we'll, I'm sure we'll be doing a bunch of live stuff all day long. So mm-hmm. tune in next week. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we will. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's an honor. It's an honor to be be here with you guys and um, be a part of the community that you guys are building. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Thank um, you. So, yeah, b- background on Chris Hofstra, um, 37 years old, uh, came from I had college education, um, got into logistics. Actually, I was in supply chain logistics, uh, particularly in freight uh, on trucks. And so my uh, my background is is uh, I was a trucker mm-hmm. um, in the on the sales side. I wasn't ever driving a truck. I don't know if I would have been able to see <laughs> over the steering wheel. I'm, I'm about five eight, so um, couldn't really see myself driving a big rig. But uh, I did that for about ten years, and um, 
enjoyed it, thought I'd never get out of it. It's kind of like any trade or business. Like, you know, you guys, like, you'll never get out of home improvement. You love it. It's, mm -hmm. your, it's, your, right, for it's sure. your blood, right? Um, I felt that way about transportation. Um, but as we'll probably talk about a little bit later in the episode, um, I had kind of moved my way through a couple businesses, uh, corporate America, uh, and then worked for a small company, all doing freight. And really, I just, I always had a desire to go out on my own. Um, I had that entrepreneurial uh, itch that I really wanted to scratch. Um, so back in 2000, <laughs> end of 2016, beginning of 17, um, I went I went, at, went out for it. Uh, went after it, I had a partner. Um, we had a brokerage, we didn't own any trucks, we were doing all uh, bridge. And the business evolved and uh, man, I could share tons of stories about being in a partnership, 50-50 partnership and um, you know, starting a business from scratch. Now, granted, you know, it's never, you never really start a business from scratch. You always got a, a mule, right? So we had a mule um, and that allowed us to really build the business. And um, two years later, the business had kind of changed and moved. And um, so I actually uh, was bought out by my partner and was looking for the next adventure. Uh, I thought for sure I'd get right back into it. Um, and I met this guy, Joe Salwitz, uh, over here and uh, he had this uh, incredible napkin sketch of lead scout and I actually believe it or not uh, had background in the trades um, I was a painter through college that's how I paid myself through college so I understood home improvement I understood that world uh, new to roofing uh, and exterior remodeling you know, from a construction standpoint um, but you know I I loved it and I, I had a, a connection to it and I really loved what Lead Scout was kind of about and um, the technology that was being uh, developed and brought to um, brought to the contractors, which we'll talk about probably a little bit later. So I, I thought, well, I just sold my business. Um, it wasn't like a windfall by any means, um, but it was an opportunity for me to take another risk um, and a risk it was, and I'm, I mean, I'll never look back. I mean, it was, uh, an incredible, uh, start to a really great partnership with Joe and, um, a growing team. And we're just super excited to, you know, take everything I learned over. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're in freight or whatever your, your trade is, um, but applying it to this business. And at the end of the day, just helping the people you, you work for and, uh, taking care of them. So. Um, so yeah, so that's a, a little bit of high level about me. Yeah, for sure. Wow, that's very interesting. So yeah, napkin stories. Yeah, man. I, right. That's, some of the greatest things in this world, I think, started on napkins. I would be curious. You know to what see I mean? What or, or a coaster, like. a coaster at right. a bar, or something right. like that. You know what I mean? You, you know, I've heard stories of Ty talking about you know how he would he would have contracts and stuff that would you know formulate starting on napkins and yeah. stuff and beer coasters. Yeah, yeah beer man. coasters and. I can that's relate. dude that's right in the trades it is that's that's literally like that's the trades 100 oh, yeah. percent, man that's awesome <laughs> yeah the, the amount of businesses yeah. we've all probably started uh and and never built but still exist on a napkin <laughs> right. somewhere absolutely freaking lutely, <laughs> man i i develop a new business every day yeah 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 so i can relate to that we should yeah, start man. a business where we laminate napkins so we never lose them there you right. go there <laughs> where you do go. you buy stocks on, on uh, napkins that's my question hey. right <laughs> hey that's a good thought that's a really good idea yeah for sure so joe what's uh give us your background bro man uh, i'm very curious because you're like the the man of mystery over there the man you know? of mystery yeah because i always speak with chris um you know because sure. we work together we use lead scout and, and mm -hmm. it's uh it's an awesome tool and so but you're like the you're like the i don't know so let me ask this question quick okay so there's always a yeah. visionary and then there's an integrator so which mm -hmm. which is which here who who's the visionary and, and who's the integrator here Oh man, man! Uh, I'd say that the the vision is a combined effort. Uh, so that's that archetype is a little bit misleading for us because the visionary is a little bit spread out, and not even just Chris and I can take credit for that. I mean, we've leaned heavily on uh, other folks in the home improvement industry for Lead Scout. Um, I certainly cannot take any credit for it. To this day, I still don't completely understand roofers and home improvement contractors because I'm the tech guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I come from the background of technology and just uh, uh, the creative world. 
uh, which feels that that's my home, but that's so foreign to a lot of people in the home improvement space. Um, but my, my background is just that I, I've the last 10 years or so I've been in um, uh, the consulting world before Lead Scout, um, specifically technology consulting. So uh, depending on your grade of understanding of technology, I usually start with, uh, if somebody asks me what I do, I say I design apps. Uh, then if they express more interest, I'll, I'll say, okay, well, actually I help, you know, businesses understand how they that te technology can fit with them mm -hmm. uh, and help businesses unravel this complexity that is tech in this day and age. Uh, and then from there, I'll go deeper, right? Um, so before I got involved with Lead Scout, I was really involved with just helping organizations in an agency kind of setting understand how to, to integrate their, um, their business processes and launch products, launch apps, launch uh, websites. Uh, and I worked with, you name it. I mean, I worked with um, uh, Scholastic launches, you know, kids books. Uh, I, I worked with Oracle, the, the global, you know, um, internet and infrastructure provider, uh, Wyndham Worldwide Hotels, it, all the way down to small companies, you know, local companies, nonprofits. Um, so I, I've kind of seen the gamut of it when it comes to tech. And I've, I've been here uh, in this space uh, since before, before the iPhone was launched, right? Mm -hmm. Working in the space. Uh, so I've, I've seen the growth of, of mobile. I've seen the growth of apps uh, and, and kind of have my, my finger on the pulse. Uh, and I've had, like I said, I've launched a ton of napkin sketches, lots of businesses on napkins along the way. But really the, the one that came when, when I first started to talk to Chris about it and started to talk to friends about it, this idea of, of helping home improvement with lead generation um, that has manifested in Lead Scout uh, via marketing and, and some of the other creative tactics that we used. Like this was the one thing where I thought, this is a good idea. We have some really good people that know their, their things, know their lane, uh, and this could work. But because before that, all my napkin sketches, maybe they were good ideas, but I didn't have the people. Mm -hmm. to launch them and that's mm -hmm. so critical for any sort of business absolutely uh, because i alone cannot do that obviously so chris uh, to answer your question more directly the visionary sure maybe i'm more of a, the visionary on the product side chris is 100 percent front lines you know he's dealing with people day to day uh but i'm also intimately involved in operations as well right like more so behind the scenes yeah no, and I can understand why that would be such a difficult question to answer because in a partnership like that is, I mean, both of you probably play both of those roles. Yeah, and the question almost makes <clears throat> makes it seem like which one of you guys comes up with ideas and which one of you guys works. You know what I mean? Like that's that's almost how the question <laughs> yeah. leads off to be. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna, I have the ideas now. You make it happen. Right. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? So, yeah. right, right. Um, I, I can I can definitely yeah. respect you know a little bit on on both ends there, and I think that that's important. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think for it's sure. important for both you know both parties to number one have a say in in you know hey I think this is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Both parties being open to each other's ideas, and you know you guys both have skin in the game. So yes. Um, yeah, obviously both want to make it happen just as much. So that's For a good sure. answer. <laughs> well, well, the cool thing about it is like Joe and I, I mean, Joe said it. And, and if you had asked me the question, I would have probably answered it the same way. Um, neither of us can really take credit for the original, original idea. What we did is rift off of um, the original idea. So, you know, it was, I think our ability to, you know, um, uh -oh. kind of work together. Um, uh -oh to kind of formulate something from the original idea and, and uh, that original idea is, is just more targeted mail um, and giving contractors the ability to have visibility into their neighborhoods and make sure their marketing was, is more profound and, and more targeted. So um, I don't we lost see. Yeah, we, we lost Joe. Here he comes. There he is. Hey, Joe. There he is. Oh, I'm sorry sure that was <laughs> nice of you to join us. Sure that was just dropped right out. I <clears throat> I have not lost internet in months, and tonight was the night. Of course, that's, dude. That's how of it course. happens, man. Listen, yes. Yeah, if anyone to the is ever, but if it anyone, couldn't handle the heat of this conversation, right. you are just bringing it. Yes. And my internet couldn't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So you were talking about, um, you know, uh, your clients and stuff. So yeah. do you? Would it? Okay. So my question is. 
So is it geared more towards, you know, guys that, like, say a storm hits down south someplace, is it geared more towards, like, and I don't, I don't even want to Actually, leave. you know what? That's Before you do that, I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Let's, let's put it out there for the viewers, because I'm sure there's a lot of people right now that are watching that don't even know what Lead Scout is. You know what I mean? So, so let's, you know, in a couple sentences here, what would you guys consider? What would you describe Lead Scout? If I'm walking by you in a booth, and you guys are in a booth right now, you know, I'm a contractor. What are you going to tell me that I, why do I need Lead Scout? Yeah. Great Chris, question. take it off the yeah, top. I'd yeah. Probably, yeah, yeah. So I'd ask you two questions, Chris. I'd say when you see a home that needs your service, are you writing that address down? Mm -hmm. Chances are I'd say, yeah. Right. You know, if you're walking through a neighborhood, driving through. And the next question I'd say is uh, when you market your company through print media, through mail, uh, are you just mailing to a zip code or an entire area? Chances are I'd say, yeah. Right. Lead Scout solves both those problems. So no more writing stuff down. You open up your phone, you literally tap the rooftop, drop a pin on the house, and from that same app, you can send a targeted mail piece to that home and that home only. So if we walk into a development and there's 300 homes, 30 of them need a roof, we're only mailing to 30 homes. So, gotcha. and we're targeting those 30 homes and we can even do it down to like the symptom, right? Like why do they need a new roof? Is it because it's a discontinued shingle and it's a storm to your point, Ty? Mm -hmm. Or is it a granule loss, right? Where it's just an old roof and it's, you know, you can wait, but it might start leaking and then you got bigger problems. So we wanted to be able to, to give the, the contractor, the roofer, because we launched this product specifically for roofing to start, the ability to say, I see a house, I know it needs my service. I don't want to write it down. I don't have time. Uh, I've got a mobile device, and uh, I want my marketing to be targeted. Yeah, right on. there's a whole there's a whole ecosystem of apps right now that people are probably starting to become really familiar with. You know, the one of the big headliners, Company Cam, great for project work. You have you know the CRMs that are really making a mark out there, job progress or uh, etc. Right. And so we're, the space that we fit into. Is, is on the front side of that. So prospecting, lead generation, marketing. Uh, and there's a really nice sweet spot of just automation and, and good tech on the front side of, of your customer uh, generation efforts. That's exactly where we wanna be and exactly what we're building into in the next year. Right on. Perfect, perfect. Cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I said, Ty, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but I was like, Man, that's a really good question, but I'm afraid if they answer that question now, right. people aren't really going to put be able to put two and two together. No, I'm and that, I'm that assuming someone, already right, that... Um, we, you know. we, we talk Lead Scout all the time right. and like the lead generation and right. all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's exactly. Like, they, these yes. are the first times that we've ever had yeah, anyone. You're right. Kind of Absolutely. No, it's great. That's great. So hopefully everybody understands now what Lead Scout does. <clears throat> um, but I guess where I was going was, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to think if I wanted to um, scale out into a different market down south someplace would i call lead scout and say hey look guys i, I really want to you know i know a storm just hit here um do i you know w would you guys be the guys that i'd need to talk to about that to help us market ourselves go ahead joe you can take this one yeah yeah absolutely so i, I want to talk about some some kind of exciting stuff we have in the pipeline right now okay so I, there's you can do that today mm -hmm. and there's some great ways that you can do that using our, our uh, iOS app that we have available you can download it right now and start literally just tapping on the map and sending mail to those areas nice but we have some exciting stuff in the pipeline so one of the things we're gonna be launching in the next year is is just that focus around storms right mm -hmm. you, you pick your locale you pick where you want the focus and and based on that information you can start blasting out mail as soon as a storm hits, okay? Because that data is pretty readily available. So the, the, the real trick is getting that data and making something of it, okay. and generating a marketing campaign around it, right? Uh, and so that's what we're really leaning into is this idea of let's make the data available to people uh, in these nice home improvement style buckets or packages, if you will, things that are designed for home improvement. Mm -hmm. And then all you really have to do is click to start it and it goes. That's phenomenal. Yeah, that's really awesome. Yeah, that's really awesome. That'll be really awesome for you know some of our big players down in down in Texas, yeah. Oklahoma. You know, in in those areas, mm -hmm. the Storm Alley where you know you don't really get roofs over three years old down there. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we had a couple guys from the south in our yeah. on our show the last couple of weeks. You know, that sounds like something that'd be right down their alley. You know, 
Unfortunately, yeah. up here, we don't get a whole lot of crazy storms. I don't know about you guys in Michigan. How yeah. are your storms well, pretty it's, intense? Well, it's interesting. We've, we've, had a, um, we've been a big hit in the roofing community. I mean, we're a home improvement uh, software service, right? Mm-hmm. So you, if you service pools, you can download it. I mean, heck, we've even had uh, churches use it uh, for <laughs> canvassing their neighborhoods when they're doing a church plant or something, right? So the breadth is there. But we've seen a lot of traction in the roofing space. Uh, and what, when we look at the u- type of users that we have, it correlates really heavily with the storm alleys in the United States. We see two trends, really. We see storm alleys and we see uh, solar now, right? So solar is a burgeoning thing, so we see a lot more activity out west. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, uh, the storm alleys, I mean, we see a ton of action in Texas, you know, north of Texas. We see a lot of hurricane action in Florida. Um, along the eastern seaboard, even up towards y'all. Uh, and, and in Michigan, too, we get our fair share of interesting weather up here. So uh, we certainly see a lot of activity in Michigan, too. No yeah. doubt. No doubt. Yeah, I, I like how versatile. So when you guys said about how, you know, even churches use it, if you think about it, man, there's there's so many different ways and, and, and you know, so many different business spaces that you guys could be in. You know, people could. Really we thought get about creative, politics, man. but then quickly said, "No, we don't want to touch that." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you could really get creative with how you used your app. Mm-hmm. You know, if someone. Yeah, yeah. You know, if someone just really needed to keep track of, you know, you know, maybe current customers, you know, prospective customers on in anything really. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? That's right. That's really cool, man. That's really cool. The yeah. one thing that I enjoy I about the app is that there's different color pins. So what I try to explain to, to Lauren and a couple other people, like, so use green if they need gutters. You know, use use the red pin if they, they need a roof or yeah. white for windows. Or you can be real strategic with it, like you guys were explaining earlier, you know, where you can, you can really nail down, you know, what it is that their issue is, you know, and not just do, like, what I call, like, the fishnet approach where you're just blasting multiple neighborhoods and you don't even know if they need a roof or not so you're 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 being thrifty with how you're spending your money and being more precise and accurate and and really you know trying to let the homeowner know you know hey we noticed that your roof was you know Mm -hmm. the shingles are you know no longer uh, made or or that your we noticed that your gutters were falling off or whatever the case might be that's what i makes it a lot more personalized it it is right exactly exactly and then um go ahead joe i was just gonna say and you know what like uh, you mentioned the uh the breadth of it is massive and frankly and many other business owners can probably relate to this the breadth is sometimes your achilles heel and uh if we're talking real talk here when it comes to business ownership you know knowing where to focus is the hardest thing 100%. 100%. Just there's so much opportunity. There's so many things we could do. Uh, where do you focus? Yeah. Uh, and that's that's really where we've we've spent a lot of effort, especially in the last year, you know, looking back over COVID yeah. and, and trying to figure out how do you make your way in this new world that we have these days? Uh, um, how do we reposition? How do we position ourselves in a way that, that makes sense for home improvement? So we have stuck very narrow, right? We're focusing on home improvement, not politics. Mm-hmm. We're focusing on roofing. Mm-hmm uh primarily yeah. still and will continue for a while um and that's that's really mm-hmm. that's really the conversation where we're, we're we're spending all of our time as we look towards 2022 20, we're we're designing these really intimate home improvement style marketing packages that are just they're they're easy to to understand uh and they're easy to to launch uh we're actually getting into the space where we're automating the launch of marketing. So you don't really even have to think about marketing anymore. It just kind of goes in the background, mm-hmm. uh, which is really exciting. And and uh, the other key too is measuring your marketing. I mean, just knowing where your your brand is being exposed. Uh, it's it's good to know your neighborhood. Absolutely. And that's where yeah, we're but, putting all of our weight into that as we move forward. Yeah, yeah Joe, I'm glad you mentioned, you know, the the challenge because i'm sure for those listening you know that that have had that challenge as well it's like man you just want to say yes you just want to help people yeah. and and whatever you know I, yeah i can do that you know sure i mean even for for you guys in in home improvement it's like yeah we could you know we'll put some exterior can lights on your uh your soffits you know sure is it what we do not every day but i'd love to help you because it would make your roof and siding look sweet right um, right 
you know so i think what joe what you were getting at and i want to uh, make a, a a pretty big point of this not only do we have this challenge of of staying focused um but we also have this challenge of not falling into what's a shiny object right selling something and bringing something to the marketplace that everybody's like oh my goodness that's amazing like i mean i'm gonna go crazy with that making a delineation between what sells in concept and what like performs in reality because mm -hmm. at the end of the day for you guys in, in home improvement you want a roof that lasts right Mm -hmm. You want you want quality products because that's what gives you guys long term sustainability and gives you guys the reputation that you have uh, where hopefully you don't have to do a lot of marketing because mm -hmm. people just fall in love with who you are and how you do work right. for us in marketing. And we I've heard some of your other shows with with marketing folks, you know, it, it, it's easy to get a bad rep. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for us with Lead Scout and, and focusing on the technology aspect of marketing, how can we put a product out there that isn't just really flashy and sexy, but gets the job done, Yeah. right? And that's what Joe's kind of talking about with like measurement and mm -hmm. automation and simplifying things. So we're really shifting, like what I, how I describe Lead Scout to answer your question, Chris, because I wanted to give you a really concise answer if mm -hmm. you're walking down you know, the booth. Right. Plus, I, wanna, I do want a little flash because I want you to stop and talk with me for right. a little bit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I care about your business and you guys getting more leads than you got before you started talking. Yeah, I right? love how you how put that, I man. That? I love how you put that because, especially in you know the home improvement space, whether you're a roofing, siding, windows, um, landscaping, mm -hmm. any any of those, like anything that has to do with the home improvement, and I may even be able to expand on that even farther. But how many times do we see the man that looks really good on paper? but can we apply it in the field? Right. You know what I mean? A lot of times, man, you get, so I run into this a lot in the, in the building aspect, you know, you'll have architects and that kind of stuff that'll put something on paper. It looks great on mm -hmm. a piece of paper, but then when you actually go out and try to build it, it's like, wait a minute, that's, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like that, that's not, not gonna, gonna work. work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's a really great analogy, man. <laughs> and like a lot of times people really do, especially in the world of social media, man, they get so wrapped up in um, visually, you know what? What is what is what does that look like? It, it looks great. It looks like it's going to be great. Oh my God! You know, so and so uses this. It's great. It has to be good. Yeah. Um, and they don't even really care so much if it actually works, until oh, yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know what let, I mean? Let, yeah. let me t yeah. let me tell you guys about my first business that I started. So this goes way back. I must have been four years old. So entrepreneur <laughs> at heart, right? Oh first business. Uh, one thing I didn't tell you in my introduction is I actually grew up overseas. I grew up in uh, the country of Tanzania in East Africa. Uh -huh. uh, in a remote village. So everything you're probably picturing right now is, is pretty pro probably pretty close to accurate as far as the, the type of setting I grew up in. You know, people would walk for miles to get their water, that type of thing, okay? My first business idea, my parents had uh, Kool-Aid, powder Kool-Aid, right? Those You guys remember those powder Kool-Aid oh, yeah. packets? Maybe they still make them, I don't yeah. know. Uh, cherry, the limeade, all yep. that stuff, yep. okay? I thought, we got a whole drawer full of these things. I'm gonna mix it up. I'm gonna, you know, put it out front, uh, you know, in these little these little cups, whatever. Um, and I'm gonna have some powder packets too. I'm gonna take some of the packets and put them out there. And I'm gonna I'm gonna sell it to these people that are walking, oh, in through our front yard, walking to go get water for miles, right? Mm -hmm. And so I did that. I tried that. So so a couple flaws in that business model. First, I didn't I didn't have any sales. First of all, I think my parents came and bought some. Didn't have any sales. So first flaw in that is. Uh, I was probably just charging too much, you know. Generally, in the third world country, people don't have money to waste on Kool Aid. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I'm trying to sell powder to people who don't have water, right? Right. So it, 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 terrible business idea. But the the, the storyline here, and the reason I think of this is I'm thinking the application was totally off. You know, maybe there's a better setting for that. But you got to right. understand who you're shooting for. You know, in your target market, you got to understand what what they're asking for and and I think about that a lot. I think about that first business a lot when we when we're trying to design the next best thing for our business and and understanding you know how to deliver something that's actually of value to people that they're actually going to enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's how I form up my product decisions as we're building this product is yeah. is forming that's it great. up with understanding what people are actually going to enjoy. Right? Exactly, what they're actually going to use. And that's the thing we try to promote too. Is like, what value are we bringing? 
you know and yeah. and that's a that could be a, a whole nother episode but of, of value and yeah. and things like that and and uh you know but but that you, to have that creativity back then you know you were you were a born leader mm -hmm. you know and to to think about the flaws that maybe you know why did this not take off the way that it should you know that that says a lot about the type of person that you are yeah you know so that's good stuff there yeah that's really i awesome. certainly know how to fail yeah well you know there's never <laughs> a failure is, no. is there you, there's there's a failure if you know you yes. don't get the results that you want and you quit right it's true that's, that's that true. is a failure but as long as you learn and you keep going and you you know <laughs> maybe don't make the same mistake twice it's not a failure exactly yeah, you know it's absolutely. a learning experience yes <clears throat> yes yeah. yep that's one of our big mottos yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But no, nah, dude, that's that's really cool. That's a really cool analogy. Yeah. Um, I would have never guessed that you know you had your first business in a third world country at four years old selling Kool Aid, <laughs> man. Like that's that's My first definitely napkin. a first. Right. Yeah, man, your right. first napkin napkin business. That's awesome, man. It is. I'd like to see that napkin, by the way. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> also, it was probably one. it was probably sketched in the, the dirt in front of our house. Right. Or carved <laughs> yeah. it into the side of a tree or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did a lot of that. Some bark. Yeah. Now I know we have limited time tonight, but I, I'm very curious about this this turkey salute. Oh yeah. Uh, oh. Chris and I were thinking about getting 22 turkeys today and trying to one up you, but I, we don't really know oh. how to do that. And I, I feel like would have ended. You'd have to get 23. Yeah. We'd have to get 23. And, yep. and 23 pots and 23 burners. But why is it the 21 turkey salute? Well, because it started out 20. It started out last year. 21 was the record last year. Yeah. We broke that. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Okay. So this year we're doing 22 at one time. Okay. Next year will be okay. 23. You know, last year we, we we looked it up. We decided that we were going to do this. It actually happened on the show. Mm -hmm. We were talking about you know, what's what's something we could do. We're like, oh well, let's feed Thanksgiving to a bunch of people. I wonder what the Guinness Book of World Records is for the number of turkeys deep fried at once. And it turned out to be 20. So we're like, we're doing 21. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's yep. what we're going to do. We, you know, we, we wanted to do like 40 or something like that. But we're like, well, wait a minute. Then we're going to have to be, do 41 next year. So let's exactly let's start low. That mm -hmm. way we only have to beat it by one every year. Right. You know what I mean? Hopefully someone's not out there like, I'll show these guys. I'm going to do 100. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But hopefully they just let us have that. That's yeah. all right. You'll do 101. Yeah. 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 We, and we will, too. We would. <laughs> for sure. So we went and we bought uh, 20 burners 20 pots 23 gallon things of oil and we were like okay let's do this so my my fear was is that okay so we're gonna have 21 people standing around that probably have never deep fried turkeys before so how are we gonna do like a little crash course real quick so we came up with the bright idea that we'll just do one real quick you know and just show everybody like you can't just drop this thing in the oil okay yeah. as we got fire extinguishers you know at, at within arm's reach of of everywhere and it's like did anybody call the fire department and even let them know that we were doing this today because literally we had a bomb like 21 propane tanks with flames shooting out of it you know it, it was it was great though so we did the crash course test everybody was you know really in tune with it so we had a crowd we actually have a video of this so then we got everybody ready. We had their uh, turkeys on the spit and they got the hook and they're holding it high. And so I'm counting down one, two, three. And everybody just slowly lowers their turkey into the pots as it's being recorded because we had to record it. And there's so many things that we had to do that way it was properly documented. Yeah. So we could submit it into the, to the, uh, uh, whatever the Guinness. American version is. Yeah. It's, the Guinness Book of World Records is, is a Europe thing. Yes. It's the, so it's the Bush Light World Records. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's something. It's something. Right. The the JV Book of World Records or something like that. I don't know, but um, it's it's like the American version. I don't know what the European um, record is, but the American no, one was. No, I, I'm pretty sure it was Guinness Book. Was it was it Guinness? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah, Book. I wasn't involved in that part, but. Yeah, that's that's kind of how it happened, and, yeah. and it turned out to be such a success. Even though, like, we really didn't know what we were doing. No, um, we were just you know a bunch of roofers that you know got together and decided to feed the community, and and we we know how to deep fry uh, shit, dude. And you know, so we, we were like, it, man. screw it, man. Let's deep fry twenty one turkeys. And we, well, honestly, this is the God's honest truth. There was so much negativity. It felt like mm -hmm. last year Pennsylvania was closed down. Um, I think it just opened back up. 
okay we didn't ask the city like hey we need to block this you know close the street down and we didn't do anything we just did it so we we actually were like okay we're going to do this mm -hmm. so we reached out to a couple different facilities and they were like no way we we can't have a crowd of people here because back then we still had the restrictions and, yeah. and, and all everyone the thought you're going to die if you didn't have a mask yes. around each other yeah, we were like, still kind of in that mist of you know we're like, <laughs> i think we're all going to die but um so we reached out to this uh this pastor pastor joel and I don't even know how we got his number. So we talked to him. And we're like, hey, this is what we want to do. And he was like, absolutely. That sounds great. Let, let's do this. So he was all like, you know, of all people, I would have thought he would have been the one, you know, a, a man of God would have been the one like, no, we can't have a group of people over 30 people or whatever it was, man. Yeah. So we did it. We went down there and we, we, we got the first batch of turkeys completed. Like he, he saw that, with the, oh my God, this thing's going to be a success. So about an hour into it, he walks over to me and he says, you guys are doing this again next year, right? And I was like, God damn right we are. God damn right we are. And we, yeah. it was just, it was great, man. 300 plus people came down. Um, we ran out of food, which was the, you know, the, the bummer of it. Yes. It so, was a great feeling, but a bad feeling at the same time. Because yeah. it's like... Dude, we ran out of food that means we fed a lot of people because we had a lot of freaking food here. yes so but that's at the amazing. same time it's like man like it's four o'clock people are still walking up and we don't have any food to give them like yes. that's that's a, a shitty feeling yeah you know what i mean yeah you don't know how far that person walks so we're like that's not happening again this no. year no no so we're, we're getting 60 turkeys 60 turkeys this year we plan on feeding 600 people no way. um but the, awesome. the mayor showed up last year um he walked me down to the end of the street i had an equipter parked on the corner of the street down at the end of the street so everybody would kind of see it and we had a banner made that was pasted to the side of the 21 turkey salute come join us so he, he walks me down the street and as we're walking down the street because he didn't like where it was parked not that he he didn't say we couldn't park it there but there was a handicap portion on the curb and it was kind of in the way of that and he was like you got to have it 10 feet back away from that i was like no problem so anyhow as we were walking down the street he's like why didn't you ask us to close the street down <laughs> and i said i'll be honest with you i said i, I we were prepared to ask for forgiveness rather than per permission mm -hmm. and he started laughing he's like dude you should have called us this is great then the the uh city police commissioner the police commissioner yeah. came down and he was rocking one of our sweatshirts there for a while i saw him because he goes yeah, he'll go live randomly yeah. on his Facebook. And like a couple weeks after that, man, he did a live video at nighttime. He actually had a Santa Claus hat on. Remember mm -hmm. that? He was yep. riding around delivering toys with a TC backer sweatshirt on. So it's oh, that's awesome. It's cool, man. Right. It's, yeah. it's 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 definitely cool. You know, the the team loves it. Mm -hmm. um, which but, shout out to the to our team because yeah. none of that would have mm -hmm. been possible. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, all the wees and everything definitely includes every single member of TC Backer and yes. the family um, that have, you know, grown to be part of the TC Backer family. Absolutely. Um, like you were saying earlier, Joe, it's it's definitely, it's the team that pulls this off. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of where I um, get into the, you know, the visionary and the integrators. Like, and this is like, we all come up with, with visions here. I mean, but everybody's opinion matters here, okay? But it's, it's kind of like, I'll think of some random stuff. And what's crazy is like Vic and Chris are the first ones that have my back. Do you know what I mean? Because they're the first ones I'm bouncing the ideas off of. And they're like, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Like when we decided to get with JP, Chris dived into that thing head first, you know, and, and at that time it was pretty crazy because there was a system that we had set up and it worked, but it wasn't scalable. Yeah. Okay. So what, like two years ago, he started to do that yeah, two years ago i did that took us from the paper and like the crazy thing about that is man when we finally got that thing worked it's like we're gonna jump ship and like so much time and energy was invested into getting this thing up and running and it was like man like yeah there is some things that we could tweak but we we figured out how to make this work mm -hmm. but you know looking at this other program it's like man this 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 could this has some features that yes. would really be nice if we could figure this right. out so it was like almost like wiping the slate clean um but right when you know it was kind of perfect man because i worked on that for mm -hmm. i don't know what maybe six months or something like that that good, i you good know six months every day just working on that mm -hmm. um and then right when i was really starting to get burned out um you know dealing with it every day you know um going through the the i can't get a hold of someone right this second i'm not you know 
bashing JP or anything because they're busy. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes our guys are, are on site down in Dallas, you know, with other companies working. They can't always answer their phone 100 percent of the time. And there's sometimes, man, like I need an answer right now. So, yeah. there, you know, after, you know, going through the trial and error, trying to teach myself how to use this thing, you know, after our trial runs have been done and everything, it's like I started to get burned out. Um, mm -hmm. And like right when that happened, man, we started bringing some more people on the team, mm -hmm. you know, some fresh eyes. And they just kind of, you know, it's kind of like the relay race. You know, I was I was pooped and I was ready to ha pass the mm -hmm. pass the torch on, mm -hmm. and they just took off with it. So yeah, um, it was really nice, and 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 that kind of really cemented everything and got us to where we it are did. right now. Because you know, it seemed like I've freaking worked on that thing for six straight months, and I was so burned out. And it's like I blinked, and it was like they went another mile with it, and it was like, yep. man, this is now I'm going to you guys and asking you questions, and I want to start this whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> so, right, right. Yeah, you started right, you right. started the jelly jar, right? And they just Yeah, you know, they popped yeah, it up. Yeah, man, they, they perfected it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They got all the they came in right right in time, man, and, and everyone's on board now. Everyone thinks it's a great idea because I'll be honest, man, at first it was mm -hmm. very few of us that thought it was a great idea. There was a lot of growing pains and for you sure. Know, it's, it's that if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of mentality. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and you know, we had a, a system that worked decently for us, but it didn't work for the entire company. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. Well, we do a lot works. of new construction, and it's geared more towards retail. So it was like between them trying to manipulate it and us trying to manipulate it to work for mm -hmm. us. But now we're finding out it actually works better or easier with new construction than it does with retail. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, there's a lot of features that we need it to do, and we don't understand why it doesn't do it again. Or not again, but yes, again, some of it worked at the time, but now it's not working again. But everything's got glitches and bugs and stuff Absolutely. like that. But but that was the biggest learning curve was like, how are we going to get the new construction aspect of this into, you know, uh, a, a program that's geared for retail, that's geared to retail, and insurance but now, work and that kind of stuff. You yeah, know I mean? that's what it's geared. Right. That's what but it now it seems like it, it, maybe we focused like hyper focused on that because that was our biggest worry because we assume that like it's geared for retail. So we'll worry about that mm -hmm. later. Yeah. You know, because at that time we were using GAF project um, right. for our retail stuff like that. But now they can actually integrate. But we've stopped using GAF project, went fully into um, JP. Um, yeah. But it, it's, it's been definitely a learning curve. Yeah. But the thing that I love the most about JP that I, that I loved more than our previous program, and I'm not going to shout out what our previous program is. We do not bash people in the show. So, um, Except each other. Yes. Um, the JP Bash seems buddy. to um, – actually, I'll start with our old program. Our old program seemed to be like, okay, they came in and said, this is how you use our program. Figure out how to mold your business around it, okay? Mm -hmm. JP came in and said, let me see how you run your business, and I'll figure out how to mold our fucking program around mm -hmm. it. Excuse my language. You know what I mean? So, like, they weren't trying to come in and reinvent the wheel inside of our facility. They're like, how do you guys do business? You guys are successful doing business. Let me see how I can get my program to gear towards your business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's a big thing because with the other program, it's like, all right, this isn't going to work. Like, we have to change how we do this. We have to change how we do this. This isn't going to work. You know what I mean? And it's like you're almost having to reinvent your, you know, your, your tactics and how, how you're doing daily operations. Absolutely. And it just, it yeah. just mm -hmm. is a nightmare. And that's, and that's just good software design. And we, we know David over at JP, and, and he's got just such a good pulse on the industry. And it's really hard to execute well mm -hmm. in that way. You know, it's, it's easy to say that's how you design software. It's really hard to implement software mm -hmm. that way. And props yep. to JP for all the the good work they've done to build yeah. their tool out in a way that's super flexible. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah, we love sure. using it, absolutely. So speaking of which, so can is, is uh, Lead Scout compatible with JP? Yeah, like how, absolutely. If, if someone and we we hope to be only ever more compatible as time goes on. So, like I said, we, we know David over at JP. We've had a lot of conversations about a, a really tight knit integration with them. But right now, we're pulling data in from from JP on a lot of our accounts. Uh, people can sync their data from Lead Scout into JP uh, or any CRM for that matter. Uh, but we do see a lot of activity and job progress, especially when it comes to the roofing space. That's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, we're we're an open. The platform is open data. I mean, you can download your data and you can mm. you can really get it out wherever you need it to be. Okay. So earlier you, you know, guys were well, talking about automation. So what? how does that work with JP? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm really excited about this. And, and where we're starting with this is a really interesting approach uh, that actually involves distribution 
Chris, I'm going to let you talk about this because this is this is super exciting and this is our 2022 and and it's in response. I guess let me tee it up and talk a little bit about some of the things that we're seeing in the industry, uh, the trends and such. And um, we were just seeing this 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 intense frustration around um, around marketing, right? And and the task of marketing mm -hmm. uh, within within a lot of the contractors businesses that we're working with, where it's like, hey, you know, to do it right, you really have to have an entire marketing department. Right. So the bigger organizations, sure, like TC, you've got a good marketing wing, right? Um, the smaller contractors struggle with that. A lot of times they're handling it themselves. And how do you even you're quoting all day, you know, you're doing your job all day long, you go out, you're quoting stuff, visiting job sites, etc. And then at nighttime, you're going through your paperwork, you're maybe writing new quotes. Where does marketing fit into that? You know, you need to be doing it. And so a lot of times people just get either overwhelmed with it. Um, or uh, and oftentimes that leads to them doing it not at all or very poorly, um, whether it be mail marketing, Facebook marketing, digital marketing, phone calling, you know, all the different types of marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, it just gets overwhelming and you just don't do a good job of it. What, what you what everybody knows to be true of marketing, though, is you you need to do it regularly for it to work and you mm -hmm. need to have this constant drumbeat of brand exposure um, or else people just are you're going to kind of fade into the oblivion. Yeah. Easy, Joe, can I ask you a billboards. question real quick? Do you, yeah, think, do you think that, that they're, all the reasoning that you led up to with that, with, you know, they're just busy throughout the day and they don't really have time, do you think that that's why most contractors, and I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I feel like it is, most mm -hmm. contractors use the fishnet method. They're just like, yeah. I don't really, I don't know, I don't have time, yeah. I'm just going to throw everything at it and something it's, will work. Yeah, there's a lot yep. of that and there's a lot of shotgun approach where it's like, I don't have time to be strategic about this. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to, you know, buy a zip code, send mail to a zip code. Right. Know, or do whatever the easiest thing is, right? Um, so I'll get it. I'll let Chris get into some of the ways that we're trying to solve that. But then at the same time, there's there's uh, the other part of this is that once you, if you actually get the, the nerve and you're like, okay, today's the day, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do this Facebook campaign. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do this this mail campaign. Then you're like, what do I say? <laughs> right. Uh, who do I talk to? Uh, I got I don't even know how to use Photoshop or whatever. <laughs> I don't know how to use this design tool. <laughs> it gets hard, especially if you don't have that marketing department to lean on, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, what is the strategy I'm supposed to do? And then at the end of the day, you know, you, you, you successfully, so you get through that, maybe you're just really motivated, you get through that, you send out the mail, and then you realize, ah, oh, I can't even see, I don't even remember what addresses I sent it to, or I, I don't, I don't know when it got there, or I have no visibility into this or no measurement, I don't know what the results are, you know, and I certainly don't have time to go back and try to, try to, you know, calculate those results and, and know where my brand is being exposed in my neighborhoods. Uh, so those are the three categories we're kind of trying to target with Lead Scout as we move into the future is, is trying to make it easy so that it's automated. You don't have to think about it a whole lot. Uh, you know, making that we making sure that we have a couple strategies, just buffet style a la carte strategies where it's like, mm -hmm. here's one for you that could, could work really well. And then of course there's measurement on the back end too. So you get some visibility into the results that you have. Uh, and that's all packaged up into our, what we do. I'm talking ambiguously here now, Chris, Chris, make this a reality for us. Tell us, yeah what this yeah. actually looks like so, in real life yeah thanks that was a good tee up though joe yeah. so mm -hmm. what i described to you guys earlier about stop writing down addresses send mail to the homes that need to hear from you mm -hmm. that sounds great that's the flashy thing right right um you know ty i i was able to get your attention you're a busy guy mm -hmm. i'll never forget our first call right mm -hmm. and you're like chris this is brilliant mm -hmm. right uh gaf um, I mean, actually, I'm rocking some GAF right now. Just to kind of give some shout out. There you go. Um, you know, those guys love us. Um, you know, we've talked to Tamco and we've talked to, you know, LP. And um, a lot of these companies have seen our product and like, man, this could really help our contractors. This is an amazing tool. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, you got to wake up in the morning and, and go out and scout. And you got to come up with the creative mailers and you got to send them and know when to send them. I think what Joe was talking about with, um, you have to do it regularly, consistently. You have to make sure you're striking an iron's hot. You mm -hmm. can't paralysis of analysis, right? You got to just go every day, go, go, go. 
And there's a lot of what we built was very much a self-service tool. And a lot of contractors had tremendous success with it. Tremendous success. Um, so much so it was like almost like, do we even share this with other people? Mm -hmm. Because these guys just work hard, right? I mean, you've got all kinds of, you know, talk, thinking about our, our servicemen and women like Veterans Day recently, you've got all these 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 people that, that work really hard to protect our country. And then you've got like Navy SEALs and, you know, Delta Force. These guys, they're, they just are a different breed, right? Mm -hmm. They're willing to not sleep for a week, whatever hell week is, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the way I would describe Lead Scout. I mean, you, you got to be willing to be that kind of breed. Mm -hmm. And if you are, you're going to see results because why wouldn't you, right? Anybody listening to this right now, if you understand what we're saying, how our tool works, it, it works. But you got to put in the put in the work. Most contractors don't have that infrastructure, don't have that time because they're wearing so many hats. So as we think, how do we continue to evolve the, the technology and really bring value at a large scale to the marketplace? Mm -hmm. We have to think about simplifying the whole setup the whole approach to a targeted marketing campaign. We have to think about automating that so it does happen regularly. So we don't have to constantly babysit it. And more importantly, as Joe talked about, I, I really want to get to it. We really want to get to a point where uh, we never have to ask someone, so uh, how did it, you know, how the campaign go and, and ever hear them say, I don't know, or I feel like it performed well or I feel like it didn't perform well mm -hmm. um, I ask that question to anybody you know really that that joins joins up or does a demo um, that are doing market uh, is that working for you yeah we think it's working why do, how do you know it's working for you well you know we typically ask the people that call in mm -hmm. and you know the, the, those tactics you've talked about it with other marketing people on the show um, they're very limited so we have to figure out a way of creating these using the platform of lead scout to create these automated programs that have built-in tracking let's give the contractor the visibility let's set it up for them let's set them up for success mm -hmm. rather than say you know here's a here's a peloton get after it buddy right go get them right, right? we want to actually build into that success and so that's what we're really excited about for 2022 is having the system automate these specific campaigns. We mm -hmm. talked about storms earlier. That's one of them. Right. We talk about some. You'll you'll hear us talk about notes to neighbors. This is the big one that we're rolling a beta out on, where we're going to automate twenty handwritten notes to the neighbors around a job. And when we say automate, how we're going to do that is we're actually going to give you guys the ability to initiate that when you place your PO with the distributor. So when you place a PO with the distributor, you got to add a box of nails, you got to have drip edge, you starter strip, all your stuff. Well, why in the world wouldn't you add a notes to neighbors? Mm -hmm. If you're going to do a job at 2055 Shadow Point, those people around that job better know who you are, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you're putting the sign in the yard. That's why you rack your trucks, right? So why don't we automate that to where it just happens, right? You place an order, bing, boom, it's done, right? And then even better, we're actually going to provide a dashboard that gives you visibility into who of those 20 homes? Because it's not the exact, we have a nice little algorithm that has some intelligence behind who we're going towards, right? We don't want to mail to somebody that shouldn't be getting the mailer. Um, but, you know, give them that visibility on uh, how many clicks on that QR code. And if they click the QR code, where are they going? Right? Are they just going to a, a your website that really has no correlation or continuity to what the mail piece was? Let's create that continuity of information so that it all kind of works in, in you know, harmony of mm -hmm. what that campaign's about, which is, look, I'm the local roofer. I'm doing a job on your street. I offer these services. I'd love to meet you. Schedule a consultation, mm -hmm. right? Free estimate. Hey, shoot, we even give free solar estimates with every roof estimate, right? There you go. So these kind of things, be able to automate that, and then we can branch off into other campaigns like rehash, right? Hatch does this so well. Shout out to Hatch from a text perspective. We should be doing that with mail. I mean, just ask any contractor, you know, how many leads do you have this year that are unclosed? Mm -hmm. And that number could obviously range. Uh, how many of those folks have you sent a handwritten note to to say, hey, life gets busy. And we know that there's a lot on your plate and that, that project we quoted back in June, 
probably just got too busy before we close your file. Mm-hmm. We'd really like to move forward with that. Can we can we book you in the spring? Or actually, maybe we can still book you this fall. Mm-hmm. You send it to a hundred people. I mean, how many how many people need to respond to pay for that campaign? Right. Like one. Right. Right. So so helping these contractors automate these really uh, influential, meaningful campaigns through the technology, I think, is what we're all about. We still want the influence of Paul, like who we had on the show a yeah. couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. He's going to help you design, you know, give give uh, um, kind of like some tips and tricks on and how that should look. We're going to guide, right? And then our platform is going to help automate that, make sure it happens every single week, every single time. Right, yeah. right. And, and I get that, like, you know, not one portion of the marketing is the end all to be all of Mm -hmm. marketing like if we just put billboards up that's just not going to generate the phone calls that we need like there's other things that go into that the yard signs the billboards right the the lead scout postcards that go out um of course all the touch points man. yeah all all of the touch points and and i feel like this really adds to that touch point because you know if you're in a neighborhood and you're already doing a job there so you have one or two yard signs there so then if you're hitting the neighbors in that neighborhood right there's another touch point so then when it if you do go across the street and knock on the door hopefully that's the third or fourth or fifth touch point of you going there even if they're not home leave the door hanger you know what i mean and that's the thing that i like about it um and i can agree to you guys being a navy seal this has worked for us we recently got a call the other day um now when the gentleman first called in i think he said that he just google searched us okay so after we received the call tom went out gave the guy a quote the gentleman calls back in and he says hey i have one of your postcards you didn't give me my 15 percent off so unfortunately he didn't when he called in he didn't say hey right. but i don't know when he could have received the postcard two days after he received yeah. the uh the estimate but it, it works do you know what i mean between the yeah. branding mm-hmm. portion of it and the marketing portion of it but but to circle back to the automation what i meant was was like a set it and forget it type of thing with jp okay mm-hmm. so like if tom sold that job to that gentleman who received the postcard can we set it and forget it and you guys kind of like yeah like if we do like okay like set it up where it's like okay we want you to do you know three on the left three on the right and six across the street how yes. can, can, do you have the capabilities of doing that yeah and, yeah. and how so, does that so work what, what chris just defined right now is what we're doing today you can literally sign up for it today on our website working via a distributor so and then all you have to do once you get through our onboarding is just add it to your PO, add it to your PO, add it to your PO, and it'll run. So mm-hmm. that's that's today. What we're we're getting into uh, at the beginning of, of this next year is is CRM integration, and what okay. that will look like is a similar process of instead of adding something to your PO, what we're going to do is we're going to be pulling information from. Let's just say it's job progress, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to be pulling information from job progress based on the criteria that you, you set. So you're going to say, for example, you'll say. Anytime that I mark a job as sold in job progress, it moves through the sales pipeline from prospect to quoted, uh, you know, to pending acceptance mm-hmm. to jobs sold. When that happens, that event in the system will say, ding, a lead scout, guess what? Job sold. It pops over to us and that would trigger that notes to neighbors campaign that Chris just, just highlighted, right? Uh, and we will have some additional segmenting on that, so you don't have to worry about, you know, everything going out. You can you can segment it uh, more narrowly and set up various campaigns based on various criteria. But that's basically the situation. It's going to be automated every time that you're you're going through a process, and you can set up those automations around your. You're talking about flexibility around who you are as a business. You can set up those automations around who you are as a business. You can sleep at night knowing that you're you're getting exposure in the marketplace without having to do it every single time, having to lift that weight every time because mm-hmm. you just set up a robot to do that weightlifting for you. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's awesome, man. That, wanna... that entire thing sounds so awesome. Mm-hmm. It sounds so, um, you know, next generation type thing. You know what I mean? It's it's. We hope so. <laughs> it's yeah. hope, hopefully I, it, it applies. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like you guys said, but I feel like you guys have the mindset and already kind of have that mentality of 
it can't just be shiny. You know what I mean? It has to, it has to make sense. So yeah. I have a hundred percent faith that, you know, we're going to, we're going to be very successful with it. Any other contractors out there watching, mm -hmm. um, make sure you guys reach out to these guys. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's, it's, it's amazing. We've been, you know, to numerous conferences, home shows, all that kinds of stuff. And, and obviously there are other people in the space that do things like you guys, but they don't do exactly what you guys do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you guys have the ideas on um, not just the shiny. You know what I mean? Because I feel like a lot of that stuff is, it's just shiny, but doesn't really work. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, like you guys mm -hmm. said, you pointed out, you know, you guys are already trying to figure out how to automate because you understand contractors are busy, man. Mm -hmm. We work dark mm -hmm. to dark. Um, a lot of times we don't have time for that stuff. And, and where this really benefits is I don't want to say that it's not beneficial for big companies like us, but because it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this could really, really benefit some of the smaller guys that really don't have a team. You know, they don't have time mm -hmm. to go out and knock doors. They don't have time to, yeah. you know, hit their hit marketing campaigns up and really, really understand what's going on behind it. Because, I mean, let's face it, dude, marketing's hard. Yeah, Marketing's hard. And if you don't have a deep pocket sometimes to pay people, to figure that kind of stuff out, yep. you know, a big company or, or a budget to, to allocate, you know, I'm going to do this much for marketing. Um, it's kind of hard to really, number one, get results in that, get in that space and, you know, get the data off the results to make sure you're not wasting your time and money. Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, that's awesome, man. Well, Very good and, point. And, and you might, you might have a decent budget, but that's your hard earned money. Absolutely. And so why waste it? And you're just supposed to, you're supposed to just throw it out there and just kind of hope. Right. Right. So we're, we're, we're setting out to build a widget, Chris. I mean, yeah. we want to build a widget to where whatever that dollar amount is, that small contractor or big contract know, okay, when I put this in, I know I get this out. Yeah. Right. Because I got to put this into a lot of different things. The yard signs aren't cheap. Mm -hmm. Truck wraps aren't cheap. Mm -hmm. You know, billboards aren't cheap. All this stuff, radio space, all this stuff, you know, so they've got a lot of different things that they have to put their marketing dollars in. Who is that? Is that Cole? Uh, yeah, What's this up, is my, Cole? Yes, say, we love it. Mm -hmm. Say hi into the microphone, Cole. I locked, the funny thing is I locked my door, you know, to, to have this time be private. And somehow he still figured it out. Three-year-olds, I'll tell you what. Good yeah, for man. him. <laughs> yeah. Get, get him out on the street. Be yeah. on the street. <laughs> He's good at that, that's for sure. That's right. Give me, give me a couple more. Go get into every it. door. You'll have more, more, uh, more signed contracts you know what to do with. That's right. Exactly. But no, I think, you know, they, they've got, you know, you, you have a lot of different things that you need to put your marketing budget into as guys are thinking about 2022 budgets. And we really want to be a, a, a company, a technology where – it's a widget and and if you put this in you can with reasonable uh certainty get something out of mm -hmm. it measurable mm -hmm. yeah. and that's what we're setting out to do so we, we definitely don't want to just be flashy we don't want to just sign up people and turn and burn them um right. which can be kind of the the stigma and software you know just get get people in. we want to if we're going to get people in, we want to impact their business for the better because if we do that game over right guys mm -hmm. for sure absolutely man yeah. Absolutely. No, that's a it. that's a good point. Um, you know, the the shiny stuff. And I can be distracted by the shiny stuff myself. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm definitely guilty of that. So that's all that's a yeah. good analogy to put on that. And like Chris was saying, you know, there there I can think of maybe one other company um that might do something like you guys do. So what's the difference? What is the difference between that company and what you guys do? What yeah. what's the what's the big you know, I can difference. certainly say that I, I've not seen any company that automates this. I can certainly say I've not seen anybody uh, automate it via distributors. Uh, I think that's something really unique. We've built some really strong partnerships with uh, distributors, soon manufacturers, mm -hmm. and soon CRMs. Um, and I, I certainly have not seen um, the, the type of combination of automation, uh, marketing, and, and the, uh, excuse me, like package of marketing tactics and measurement those three things combined i've not seen that on the marketplace okay. i think what we have here is and i'm biased of course because it's my product mm -hmm. but i think it's really special um i think it's it's going to be really powerful for folks that start using it this next year I'm, I'm really optimistic about it and and that's a that's a no bullshit pitch from your product guy i'm not the sales guy mm -hmm. <laughs> i can agree with job. that man but, yeah. i can agree with that because i've seen like i said we've gone to mm -hmm. a lot of these places i've yeah. been pitched by a lot of these guys and the companies that yeah. Ty talks about i've been pitched by them i've 
seen the details on what they do and it's like um, fortunately you know at the time that the times that this has happened I've had lead scout in the back of my mind because we have been working with you guys for a little while so mm-hmm. um, I, I can agree with that and I'm not you know this isn't my thing so um, mm-hmm. this is a completely unbiased opinion yeah um, it, it, yeah. it works you know what I mean it works and it's yeah. it's easy to use and mm-hmm. Um, and Joe, you're right. I guess I was thinking more along the lines of like postcards and, and that type of branding. But mm-hmm. but what you said, you're right. I can't think of one company that's doing what you guys have done and are going to do come 2022. Mm-hmm. It, it sounds like that you've you've gotten in at, at the right time mm-hmm. um, be, yeah. before anyone else has been able to pick up, you know, what, what you guys are putting down. But, but like you said, it, it's your team. It's your team of, of, of people that you have behind you to support support you and and uh, to you know to get it out there and and let people see what you guys do and it is it is very special i think that's what has attracted me to you guys more than anything is you know chris the way and and chris chris is i I don't want to call you a salesperson or the salesman but you're the you're the guy that that explains it well and and you're very um patient and to work with me you know the way that you've worked with me to explain like how things work and and like how available you are like chris was saying earlier about you know some other companies that we deal with sometimes they're just not available you know like when we need them it's like jesus christ we need this to work like we gotta we have to get this to work Mm -hmm. but you've always seemed to have been available for me um on any time that i've ever had a question and have recommended like things that I've never thought about either. Like, dude, you're gonna wanna do this or try this or do that. It's like like the, um, what was it, the um, the drip campaign. Like I've never, I, what the hell is a drip campaign? Do you, do you know what I mean? And the way that you explain it to me, I'm like, dude, that's badass, bro. And it's like, well, that's what we do here. You know, so that it's good stuff that you guys do. And Joe, yeah. you're, you're, you're amazing. Um, your ideas and and um, you know just your talent that that you have and of course of course Chris I'm not taking anything away from your talent of you know you guys fit together. You guys seem to make a great team. Yes, that's what I'm trying team. to get to. It's well, like, there's a there's a empty chair next to me that uh, where a, a big statue of the industry sits, and that's that's our CTO uh, Matt, who's not here tonight, uh, and we haven't done him justice on this call. Mm. Uh, he's he's the third pillar to this stool. Uh, we would fall yeah. right over without him supporting us. Right yeah. on, man. We wouldn't, we wouldn't, truly wouldn't be on the show right now talking about, well, we would because we're just a couple four dudes just hanging out here on a Wednesday night. That's right. You yeah. Know, shooting shit. But, but we wouldn't be talking about leads. We would have been talking about what Lead Scout would have been. Right. Uh, if it wasn't for Matt. Um, so I, I hope you guys get to meet him soon. Um, and uh, yeah, so I like it. The yeah. three amigos. Shout man. out to Matt. The triangle is the strongest shape in in nature, man. It's 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 the hardest thing. Um, you know, the the stool analogy. I liked it. Um, before we mm. hop off here, though, we are kind of running out of time here. I do got to hit you guys with the million dollar question. If you guys watch the show, you guys know what the million dollar question is. So hopefully, you put some thought into this. Um, I'll start with I'm you first, Chris. So. <clears throat> We ask this to everyone that we could, that comes on here, and I've gotten a lot of different answers. I've gotten some good ones. I've gotten some bad ones. Um, but the question is, as a business owner um, or you know anyone in the workforce, what gets you out of bed every day? What motivates you to not only just suit up and show up, but to perform mm. at a high um, a high rate to your best ability? You know, what motivates you and drives you? What gets me up in the morning? For me, a problem worth solving all day, all night. It's it, I've gotten so engaged in every industry under the sun, uh, from the most boring, convoluted sensors on the top of offshore wind farms to uh, you know nonprofits that are helping house people that can't afford it. I can get psyched up and pumped up about any problem that's worth solving, uh, and that truly is what gets me up to solve unique problems every day. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Great answer. And you're, and That's you're damn good. You're one. damn good at it too, Joe. Yes. Uh, what about you, Chris? My. So you guys know what the enneagram is? <laughs> Start with an E. Enneagram with an E. Look, look it up. Uh, those watching, look up the enneagram if you don't know what it is. So, it's like the oldest personality assessment. In, okay. So it's in, like the disc assessment. Um, kinda. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's okay. like the oldest, most ancient. Of course, they're going to say most accurate, right? Right. So there's there's nine different types of people in the world. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is kind of, and then you have like 
you're you, you know you can be like kind of one person and another person but for the most part you're you're this one main person you cannot you can get these wings so i'm a two and a two is a helper i'm not going to go through the whole enneagram you guys got to look it up but mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm a helper so i mean by definition because i took the personality test and they're not wrong what gets me up in the, in the morning is being able to be available. I mean, you said it perfectly, Ty. Be available and help these contractors. Now, there's there's a lot of sins that come with with that personality, right? There's a lot of you know, double is a double edged like anything, double edged sword. But for mm -hmm. me, it's it's helping when when I am on the phone with the contractor that's talking about, man, we just need to generate more leads. We we're trying to do this, like. I just salivate at the opportunity to help them solve that problem. So, awesome. um, so that's, that's definitely what wakes me up in the morning and why I, you know, tirelessly try to be available. Um, I do have a family, you know, uh, like Joe, so I have to be available and help them sometimes. Right. Um, but when, from a professional standpoint, as an, as a business owner, I just love helping y'all. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what gets me up. Right on. Yeah, those are good answers, man. Very those good. are good, you know, generic answer, not generic. Um, that was completely like a non-generic. Yeah, answer. non generic Because a lot of answer. times we get a, a generic answer like my family. Right. Well, of course well, we all get right. out of bed for our family. Yes. Like we, no oh, one's going to sit up here and be like, I don't really care about my family. I just yeah, come to work because I like and, it. And we had one dude that was straight up <laughs> honest. He was like, the money. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I like to make money, yeah, and that's I how get I out of bed for the money. I I have a question for you too. So you never answered this. Did you get the world record last year at the turkey salute? And Hell yeah! You know we year? did. Hell yeah! Dude. Why do you think we're still standing there? We're the well, fucking they were, champions. They review. They review the footage. I Kidding know that, me? right? And then they'll get you in a technicality. I've seen it happen. Joe's, no. Joe's right. Hey, Joe's bro, right. There is nothing no matters. Listen, the only thing that matters is what's going through here right now. Right. Okay. That's We're right. the champion. Okay, I'll show yeah, you a video matter. right I now. No <laughs> I have no doubt. We have instant replay. Yeah, man. Um, we yeah, followed man. all the rules. We did it exactly everything. Now the the issue was is everything was a little wonky last year, so there was no response from ever, anybody. Um, so when we did what we did, it was like it fell on deaf ears. So like nobody responded to what we did, but. Like I said earlier, it really doesn't matter. It yeah. only what what matters is what we think. Yeah. Yeah. So you I don't know, know if so. there's a book somewhere that you can see our name in it or not, but we definitely did it. We yeah. looked it up. We definitely did it. We recorded it. We sent it off to where it needed to go. Look, and I challenge anyone, anyone that's listening, try it. Do it. The dude, beat one up us. Do twenty three turkeys. I dare you. Go for it. I dare I you. Can, I'll do freaking one hundred next year. It'll be one hundred. Actually, you know what? I'll do 99 just to be a shit. 99 turkeys. Mm -hmm. He's not joking. Don't test me. It'll be called 99 what turkey. Hey, Ty, what are you trying to say about this uh, this episode with, with Lead Scout? You know, just what am I trying to say? 99. 99. 99. It's going to be a little shit. You're just going to be a little shit. Just a little <laughs> shit. You know? <laughs> Always one short, you know? I, I tell you what. Save yeah. some turkey for us. We'll come visit you. We will. Uh, week after Thanksgiving. Save a slice for us. Unless it can go feed somebody else who needs it. Absolutely. Then we'll go out, we'll go out and buy a turkey for We us. will. Bro, if you're going to be say. here the week after Thanksgiving, we will fry a fucking turkey up in our parking lot for yeah. when you Absolutely. arrive. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Roll out the red carpet it. and everything, man. Come Do on it. down. We're coming. Do come it. We're coming. I, we will sit here on live and eat turkey in front of the entire audience yeah <laughs> we'll do it come on down yeah that would be awesome that would be awesome but yeah so next it's it's next week mm -hmm. um next wednesday we're going to be down there from one to six we're actually going to be down there all day from like 7 30 a.m till probably 7 30 p.m yeah um we got a lot of people volunteering it's going to be a great event um we're shutting the entire street down mm -hmm. we're hopefully going to have be feed 600 plus people um anyone that wants to come down and eat hang out um, we don't really need too many more helpers. I think we got that all covered as far as get your hands dirty. But we're actually, so what I'm really excited for this year, we're actually going to be able to set tables up and sit mm -hmm. down and eat. Yeah. Last year we couldn't do that. 
You know what I mean? We it was it was kind of like grab grab and go. You yeah. have to take it home to, eat, to yeah. eat it. This year we're actually setting tables up. People can hang out. Mm-hmm. You know, get to get to know the community, get to know us. Yeah. Because um, that's what this is all about, man. It's, it's a com- it's a community building event. Yeah. Um, you don't have to be less fortunate to come down. No, turkey. this you is I mean? we're we're feeding the community. Right. And and the cool thing is is so this is our second annual. But this year we've had not that people weren't volunteering last year and mm-hmm. and. But this year, there is an outpour of um, people reaching out. I mean, banks. Banks want to donate monetarily, voluntarily. I mean, they they just... So, okay, so we have a local credit union that wants to help out. I had someone reach out to me from a company called South Wire, which used to be New York Wire Company. Like, dude. You want to know a fun fact about that? I put their roof on. They're over in Evansville, right? I don't know where it is. Southwire, yeah. But, um, put a roof on there. So they reached out, Bobcat from York. I mean, like, all of these people. So I'm thinking we're going to have to do, like, make this into a nonprofit at some point in time. And then it has struck my creativity, like, okay, so we should hold sponsorships. You know what I mean? So for, like, 2500 bucks, you'll become the gold sponsor. That'll cover the turkeys. Um, silver sponsor, 1500 bucks bronze sponsor a thousand bucks or whatever you know what i mean because of the 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 way that everyone is reaching out about this it's it's i can see billboards of 21 turkey salute next year up and down 83 across america Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and and honestly that's why i was trying to provoke people like encourage people like do this i dare you right go buy 20 freaking one deep fryers and 21 thawed turkeys i got a Reiterate that thawed turkeys. Yeah, you don't please want. Please don't stick a frozen turkey. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> you don't want frozen turkeys. And and do it. Support your community. Get right. out and 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 do it, man. Because yeah. there's so much. It's not as much negativity as there was last year. But this has been such a great thing. And like Chris said, this year is going to be cool. It's not curbside pickup this year. Okay, so people are going to be able to actually chill out, sit down, eat something. And, and just enjoy themselves. You know, it doesn't matter. Bring your family down. Bring your friends down. Bring mm-hmm. your aunt, your uncle. Um, of course, if, if you're not having Thanksgiving dinner or you can't afford Thanksgiving dinner, by all means, come down. We'll fix you guys up, you know, five to ten plates to, to take it home to feed your family on Thanksgiving Day. I mean, that that's kind of why we're doing this. But really, we really just want to bring the community together as one. You know, and, and for right. a community that, that has been so good to us, who has blessed us as much as this community has blessed us, we, we want to give back Absolutely. more so than anything. And, Absolutely. and that's that's the core of why we're doing this. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for letting us be a part of it. Yeah, yeah man. man for way. sure. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. And you, got, you guys are a part of it. You know, whether, whether you guys know it or not or you're not here or, or whatever you know what i mean you guys yeah. are a part of it you guys are part of the tc backer family absolutely um and it's the entire family that absolutely makes this impossible so um thank you guys very much for yes. for your time tonight um there's a lot of things um <clears throat> that we you know we didn't really get to touch on there's so much about lead scout that we can yeah. probably still talk about um unfortunately we got to leave something for the next time you guys come on that's right um which hopefully is not too long from now right um but, yeah, we make sure it. you guys check us out. Check us out next week. And anyone out there that needs more information, um, if one of you guys want to want to rail off here how somebody can, can get in contact with you, any contractors or anything like that? Leadscoutapp.com. There you go. Easy enough. Leadscoutapp.com. Yep, we'll um, post you that guys, in Do you guys have any kind of social media tags or anything like that? Any, any Facebook? You guys got a Facebook page? We do have a Facebook page. It's not worth checking out at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I but love the honesty. Wanna, if, if you want to go there, head over to Facebook. Check us out, uh, Lead Scout app on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram. Uh, give us a little shout out, and we'll we'll uh, we'll shout you back too. Maybe we'll give you a yeah, special offer on one of these marketing packages. Ooh, I wanted to ask yeah, you guys a question. Now, we haven't had a sponsor yet for our show. We see mm-hmm. other podcasts have sponsors and things like that. Would you guys be interested in sponsoring the Behind the Tool Belt? Well, we can make let's like, do it, Ty. Yeah. Uh, let's do it. We can make like a little commercial and stuff. Yeah, we'll make a little know. commercial. Of course, let you guys approve it, um, and and we'll and play it throughout the show. At some yeah. point, on twenty minutes into it, we'll give Lead Scout a big um, shout out. But the only thing that we ask in return is is we we need uh, paraphernalia, man, like T-shirts, hats. Yeah, 
pencils, swag. Like, yeah, swag. Paraphernalia sounds bad. Right. Well, <laughs> we, we need swag. Yeah, we need some swag. <laughs> Sorry, swag. that we was my old behavior some, starting some, to come out. Some threads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The cool thing is threads, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll get yeah. you a little bit of both. We'll get some swag okay. and some paraphernalia. Yeah. There you go. Cool. All right. That's the only thing we want you know, in exchange. Awesome. Well, you guys we have really been fun. We really appreciate being on here. Thank yes. You yeah, thank, you. thank you guys very much. Thank you guys very much. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys have in 2022. Yes. Um, I'm sure you know we'll, we'll all be in touch here. So. Yes. Um, thank you guys for coming on. TC Backer family, make sure you guys – Go and support these guys. Hop on their Facebook page and, and like it so that maybe they'll get on there and, and add some content to it so it's not so terrible to go look at. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, but anyone that has any kind of questions, um, you know, reach out to the leadscoutapp.com. If anyone wants to just reach out to us directly, we can get you guys in contact with these guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure they have little little packages they can put together to really show you what, your, what their stuff's all about. If you're if any of this stuff interests you, mm -hmm. if you're watching this on the replay, if you're a contractor, make sure you guys reach out to these guys. Yeah, man. They guys have a really good, really, really good product. And and honestly, we in this hour and 19 minutes, we haven't really even been able to do it justice. So uh -uh. Make sure you guys go check them out. Make sure everyone hops on the stream next Wednesday. Day. Um, I'm not sure exactly what time we're going to be officially going live with the 100th episode, but we will be going live throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have our boy Wayne Scott. Um, he is going to be live with us for a little bit. I'm sure we'll be having people pop on yep. um, throughout the day, but make sure you guys check us out next yeah, week. Man. Thank you guys, everyone, for tuning in to episode 99. Um, and have a good rest of your week, man. Yeah, man. Have a good rest of your week. It's a little cold out there. I'm sure you guys are freezing up there in, in Michigan. It's probably really cold up there. Are you guys uh, Are you guys Wolverines fans? By chance. Go blue. Are you? Go blue. See, that's what I'm talking about. Me too. Right on. All right, everyone have a good, good rest yes. of your week. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys all next Wednesday for the 21 Turkey Salute. See you guys.